Thank you, Jonathan, distinguished guest. I want to thank the Interdisciplinary Center for inviting me to the opening of the ITC's 10th International Conference. This marks my third year in a row with you, and it is indeed an honor. I commend all of you, the participants in the conference, for the work you do, and for your continuing commitment to the challenge of countering terrorism. Your work only continues to grow in importance. I would also like to thank you for allowing me to participate in this remembrance of the victims of terrorism from September 11 and from other acts of terror, no matter where they occurred around the world. As we saw here in the region recently, it is unfortunately true that there are those who continue to murder in order to prevent those who desire peace from succeeding. For America, September 11 was a singular moment that shaped how Americans think and react to the world around them. In the United States yesterday, people gathered in New York, in Washington, and on a windswept wind hill outside Shanksville, Pennsylvania, to remember those we lost on September 11, what we as a country lost, and what we found in the days and years since. We've seen people, nations, and religions come together in the struggle to defeat terror. And President Obama yesterday reminded Americans and our friends around the world that we need to remember who we are fighting against and what we are fighting for. Our enemies, he said, respect no freedom of religion, and Al-Qaeda's cause is not Islam. As some of you know, I have an intensely personal connection to September 11, so I was serving as acting permanent representative of the United States to the United Nations on that day. I remember the shock I felt as I saw on the television in my office just located across the street from the United Nations, saw the second plane strike the Twin Towers. I remember the disbelief and inability to comprehend what had happened and why, as I spent the next several hours on the phone with officials in New York and Washington, trying to, to determine our immediate reactions. I remember looking out my window to see the pitch dark plumes of smoke rising to defile the beautiful blue New York City sky, as U.S. Air Force fighters circled overhead, affording protection to Manhattan below. And I remember hearing the sirens of our brave police, fire, and medical services personnel as they rushed to the scene, valiantly prepared to give their lives in the effort to save those who were trapped beneath the broken concrete, twisted steel, and shattered glass. It wasn't until the next day that we finally gained at least some semblance of understanding of the magnitude of what had happened the previous day. More than 3,000 people from over 90 countries were murdered on September 11 in New York, Washington, and Pennsylvania. Now, nine years later, it remains necessary to demonstrate that not just Americans, but people of goodwill around the world will not be intimidated, that our resolve remains firm, and that international will and cooperation in confronting terror is strong and constant. This extreme in, extremism is directed not just at the United States, but at the values we espouse and which animate the Charter of the United Nations. I do not believe that we are engaged in a, class of civil, in a clash of civilizations. We are engaged, rather, in a clash between a global civilization, which is politically culturally and religiously diverse, but which shares many common values and aspirations, and a radical enemy eager to use terror and the death of innocence as a political tool. It is a clash we have not asked for, but cannot avoid, and one which we must prosecute for years to come. Two days after September 11, I told the General Assembly, because this attack struck at all of us, it is right that we should work toward a coalition to defend our shared values against terrorism. We have done great things since then, and this conference serves as a testimony to international commitment. Three or four days after September, September 11, I took my daughters, who were then in their early teenage years, to Canal Street, which is the closest one could get to Ground Zero. There was still a stench in the air, and hundreds were still wandering the area looking, hoping against hope that a missing loved one would be in a hospital or taking shelter with a friend. Tears were commonplace. I wanted
invited my daughters to have a personal memory of the tragedy because we are in for a long and arduous fight. While terror is proximate and real for many around the world, for many others it is not a clear and present danger until unfortunately it strikes them. So today we honor our dead and promise justice to those that took our loved ones from us and continue to do so. Remembrance gives us direction and renews our faith, our faith in this necessary struggle. I want to say I'm grateful to those Israelis who have commemorated all the victims of 9-11 with memorials throughout Israel. I thank you for joining us and others around the world in this fight, which is one that we cannot afford to lose. Thank you very much.